Hey guys, welcome to Sound Vault Tutorials. Um, today we're going to be taking a look at sidechain compression within Logic Pro X. So, um, yeah, it's a very sh common studio technique, can be heard in sort of multiple genres from sort of deep house through to sort of drum and bass. But yeah, it's very recognizable. As soon as you hear it, you'll notice the technique straight away. But yeah, today in this tutorial, we're going to be applying it to a bass sound um, to achieve a sort of pumping sort of bass effect. So, we're going to be using native instrument instruments massive so let's just load that up now we're going to be using um, a preset from one of our free downloads one of our free preset packs this one is the night freak uh, drum and bass presets for native instruments massive we're going to use um, preset bass 17 so let's just load that in let's just drawing some midi here Right, so what do we need to do to achieve this effect? We need the sound that we want to affect. We also need a trigger sound to trigger the uh, side chain on the compressor. So let's just load in a kick. We're going to use one from the Vengeance Packs. Let's just load that in. Just draw out a basic sort of 4 4 kick pattern. Just going to re key this slightly, just take out. A little bit of the low end on the um, kick there. Right, okay, so let's take a listen. So we've got a kick and we got our bass. What we now need to do is uh, assign a compressor onto the channel that we want to affect. Um, I tend to use the classic VCA for this. Uh, what I tend to do is turn the ratio right the way up and the threshold right the way up first. Um, we then need to go onto the side chain on the compressor and select the audio channel that we want to use as our trigger. In this case, it's our kick. So let's take a listen. There's not any effect on there at the moment where we turn the threshold right the way up, but as we start reducing, bringing down this threshold, we can start to hear the effect being applied. Just going to take the output down a little bit there because it does tend to increase it in volume. So we'll just take that down there to compensate. So you can see as we start bringing this compressor threshold down, we start to increase the sort of pumping sort of sound. So if we bypass it there and then with it, you can really hear that sort of bass sort of pumping now. Um, it can be used um, on sort of pads. Um, use it sometimes on sort of hi-hats to sort of come in and out of the kick on a sort of breakbeat. But yeah, um, you can start getting creative, start playing around with your sort of kick pattern to achieve sort of different effects. But yeah, so say for instance you're in a situation and you've got your kick pattern And then you want the effect to be applied, but you don't want the kick to be audible. So what you can then do is, if I copy that down, and you can set the channel to no output. What that does, it still allows the trigger to be sent to the compressor, but it's not audible on the main output anymore. So if we go back to the compressor, select our new channel, which is audio 2, we delete that original one there you can hear now the effect still being applied but we can't hear the kick anymore so it's great if you're working on sort of a breakdown or something like that and you don't want your kick in there but you obviously still want that effect to be applied that's how you achieve it so yeah um bit of a simple one today but it's a very common technique a lot of people don't know how to do it once you learn how to do it you'll start using it all the time um i use it in in nearly every single track that I produce. So it can also be used as um, a sort of a mixing technique rather than an effect as well. So if you have it quite um, sub subtly, um, you obviously, you're not getting that sort of same pumping sound, but what it is doing is it is reducing the volume, the signal of the bass sound whenever the kick is played. And that can give you um, 
uh, more clarity in your mix, allowing the kick drum to come through, pump through in your mix more because obviously you've got clashing frequencies between your bass sound and your kick drum sound. They're, they're in the same frequency range. So you can go in and do some sort of EQing and stuff like that just to enhance it even more. But I tend this is a very good solid technique to just allow your kick to really pump through that mix and you get a, not, a much nicer cleaning sounding mix. So yeah, um, thanks very much for watching. Um, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're going to be uploading loads of new um, free content preset packs and things like that. So also head over to soundvault.co.uk. We've got loads of preset packs up on there. We've also got all our tutorials and we've also got loads of free music downloads as well. So yeah, thanks again for watching. Uh, we'll see you next time.